So, this is the same problem except this time our business model is collect contractual cash flows and sell the investment after a considerable time. Therefore, our business model is hold to collect and sell. Alrighty. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the treatment is FVOCI, right? Since the business model is hold to collect and sell. So regarding the purchase price, they are entirely the same as your amortized cost. So they are also accounted for with a premium of 105 If you haven't watched the previous video, please do. <laughs> All right. And then for the amortization table, this is the same. Now, let's take a note here. There you go. <laughs> okay. So this is exactly the same as our Amortization table, we have already discussed that extensively. Go back to it if you need a recap. Now, let's see here. Our journal entries is almost the same as our, uh, what do you call this, as our amortized cost. The only difference is we have to account for the change in fair value after everything else is done. That's it. Okay? So for our interest received, let's just do it as if it's the first time that we're doing it. They're all based on the Amortization table, so cash, interest, income. This would be 300,000. For the premium amortization table, that would be our premium amortization that would be on the table, I should say. And this would be again a decrease to both the interest income and the investment in bonds 51,000. The third entry is the payment of principal, debit, cash, credit, investment in funds. One million, one million. Okay. All right. So to account for the change in fair value, remember your fair value in 2022 is not based on 3 million anymore because we have paid 1 million, right? So it should be based on a face value of 2 million instead. 2 million multiplied by, it says up top, it's quoted at 105 at year end. So 1.05. Okay. So this would be 2 million times 1.05. So the carrying amount before adjustment would be based on the amortization table, which is 2054183.81. So there is a gain of 45816.19. So let's account for that by debiting. Oh, by the way, since this is a financial asset at FVOCI, that should be the label, right? Careful. So we would debit financial asset FVOCI and credit on realized gain OCI. <clears throat> 4545. Now, if we are being asked what would be the carrying amount on 2022, that would simply be the fair value here. Well, how much is the unrealized gain in 2022? We just computed for it. That is 45,816.19. On July 1, instead of July 1, let's just say, since this is annual, Let's say December 31, 2023, the company sold the investment at 110. So let's account for this, all right? Just change the date in your particular handout. Thank you. So in our 2023, we again recognize these entries, the interest that we receive, the amortization of our premium, the principal payment, and we account for the same, okay? so. That would be, there you go. This time, based on the amortization table, we have only 200,000 interest received. For the 
premium amortization. Once again, this is based on the table. 35, 35. Oops. There you go. And for our principal payment, another 1 million. Now, it says here that we have sold the bonds or we have sold our FA at FVOCI. So the fair value would be the selling price, right? So we update the carrying amount to fair value. So our carrying amount, we have not yet amortized it, right? So on December 31, 2022, the, fair am the carrying amount would be the fair value at year end, right? Which is this one, 2.1 million. After which this year, they note, we have a premium amortization. Again, it reduces our balance as well as a principal payment. Now it's so little, right? Our carrying amount on 12-31-2023, there's no adjustment in fair value. The adjustment in fair value would now serve as our selling price, right? So our carrying amount is 1,634,334.71. And we have paid off 2 million of the 3 million total principal, right? I'll show you. Once again, we have a principal of 3 million originally. And we have paid off 1 million in 2022 and in 2023, right? So the remaining balance face value is 1 million. That would be the basis of our quote. Once again, if it's a quote, it would multi it would be multiplied by the face value. So 1 million remaining face value multiplied by 110. Selling price, 1 million face value multiplied by 110%. So we have an unrealized gain, FBOCI, for... 35,665.29. Now, hold on a second. It's similar to our premium amortization here. What happened? Ah, it's just a coincidence then. Okay. Alrighty. So, carrying amount of 1,064,334.71 and the selling price, that would be our unrealized gain. No, no, no. Hold on a second. Why did our carrying amount here differ from our amortization table, right? Based on, amort based on our amortization table, it should have been 1018. In fact, last year, it should have been 2054. Remember, you cannot use the amortization table anymore to determine your balance. If it is FBOCI, use amortization table only to determine the premium or discount amortization. However, you would use the fair value at year end to determine the balance. Okay, so that's the key distinction of the FVOCI treatment versus the amortized cost. Remember, your last transaction, if it is classified as FVOCI, is you are recognizing the unrealized gain. That's why instead of 2,054,000 in 2022, our carrying amount was 2.1 million. Okay? Alrighty. Mm -hmm. So that's why our starting point here is not the amount in the amortization table. Huh? It's based on the fair value since this is fair value OCI. Fair value 1231 2022, right? Not amortization table balance since FV OCI. Very important to remember. That's why this is uh, also different from the amortization table because our starting point is different already, right? It's based on fair value instead of the amortization table balance. I cannot emphasize that more, right? So our unrealized gain is FVOCI 3565.29. So debit, 1231.23, debit financial asset at FVOCI, credit unrealized gain, FVOCI, 3535. Next up is 
our recognition of seal, right? Step two, recognize the seal. Now we have updated our carrying amount already to our selling price. So the value of our carrying amount is the same as the cash that we receive. Hence, there would be no gain or loss. Debit cash, credit financial asset at every OCR. Lastly, don't forget, since this is FBOCI, our step three is to de-recognize the unrealized gain or loss for the balance. Since this FBOCI is classified based on the business model, this is FBOCI mandatory, right? We did that as the first step a while ago, right? So we debit all the unrealized gain, OCI. How much is this? That would be your unrealized gain in 2022, which is, let's go back to it, this one, 45816.19. And then the another unrealized gain in 2023 that we just recognized a while ago. This would be our total unrealized gain. And since, once again, this is FBOCI mandatory, the entire balance of unrealized gain will be close to tan -tararan, gain on investment. There you go. 81,481.48.